I've been dreaming about Italy for many years. Its rich art history, its romantic language and culture. Now, I needed to make my first trip to Italy special, and I had to make my first stop in Venice, or in Italian, Venezia. I have been to Venice, California, and I've stayed at the Venetian in Las Vegas. But the real Venice is beautiful beyond my imaginations. Here I am at the marvelous Piazza San Marco. In order to get here, I took the Vaporetto Line Two down Grand Canal from Piazza Roma. My mother here is wearing a localized jewelry that's made here in Venice. This is the famous Cafe Florian, nestled right in the heart of St. Mark's Square. You can sit here, enjoy live music, and soak in the Venetian atmosphere, all while ordering any of the traditional Italian beverages. The Rialto Bridge is a beautiful spot for photo ops. Beside it, there is a DFS luxury mall. Head to the top floor for the best view of Venice. Hi, mom. Hi. Where are we? We're in Venice, Venice. Italy. Beautiful. Not Venice, California. Kind of Yeah. Panoramic. Ciao Venezia, the glorious city in the sea. I have created a special place in my heart for you. I can't wait to see you again for Carnival, when you will grace me with the most extravagant mask. I can't wait to come back next time with the love of my life, and we will be riding on a gondola. Stay beautiful, Venezia. Ciao. On day two, I hopped on a train to take me from Venice to Florence. The train ride was about two hours. I was wearing my Kenzo shirt and loaded up on sunscreen. Florence, or in Italian, Firenze, is the birthplace of many open-minded artists, like Michelangelo. From year 1434 to 1737, Firenze was ruled by the Medici family which used its powerful wealth to fuel the flourishment of art. Ponte Vecchio Bridge is one of Firenze's landmarks that you just cannot miss. You would think it's just a simple bridge from looking at it afar, but on it resides old Florentine jewelers and merchants, artisans and craftsmen. It's a perfect place to pick up a token of Florence. Take one whole day to visit two of the famous museums of Florence. We started off in the Academia Gallery, which is where this handsome guy resides. Then we visited the Uffizi Gallery, where we saw Botticelli's Birth of Venus and one of Michelangelo's rare paintings. There's just art everywhere in Italy. The best art I've ever seen. For dining in the city, I highly recommend Zaza. 
and this beautiful concept restaurant, La Minagère, where you can dine in a garden-like atmosphere with a flower shop inside. Their menu is vegan and vegetarian friendly, which I was greatly grateful for. Here we are in Pisa, at the Square of Miracles. And the main attractions are all here in this little square. Crowded with tourists even in early September. And of course, everyone's here to take photos with the Leaning Tower, including this princess. You gotta try the pizzas here. And the squid ink pasta. I stayed at the Grand Hotel Duomo, which is really conveniently located. Literally a two-minute walk to the Leaning Tower. My hotel also has a beautiful rooftop restaurant, which overlooks the entire Square of Miracles. An amazing spot for selfies. We're headed for Rome. There's actually no direct train from Pisa to Rome. So we had to take the train from Pisa to Florence, then Florence to Rome. Rome was a beautiful stranger, braver than a gladiator, and manlier than Prince Charming. Calling out to me, Bellissima, Bellissima. The first afternoon we arrived Rome, or in Italian, Roma, we encountered a film shoot on location at Piazza di Spagna, the famous Spanish Steps. To get here, I took the metro line to Spagna Station. Speaking of movies, this is also one of the iconic locations in the movie Roman Holiday. Here I am walking down the Spanish steps. My outfit here was inspired by the timeless beauty, Audrey Hepburn. This is where her character, Princess Anne, treated herself to a gelato in the movie Roman Holiday. But I was hungry for pizza. Head south on Piazza di Spagna and continue onto Via di Propaganda for about five minutes and you'll catch a lovely little pizza shop by the name of La Focaccina Roma. The guy working there had a peculiar sense of humor. After I got my pizza fix, I couldn't resist another stroll down the Spanish steps at Piazza di Spagna. I know I seem a little overdressed, but when in Rome, also, within walking distance is the famous Trevi Fountain. Here's how to make proper wishes. Throw a coin from your right hand over your left shoulder. The first throw will make you return to Rome. The second toss will grant you new romance. It really works like magic. I saw a great number of famous arts in the Vatican Museum. This one you're looking at took up almost half of the wall in what used to be a Pope's room. The two main figures in the center are supposed to be philosophers, Plato to the left, and Aristotle on the right. When young Raphael painted this, Leonardo da Vinci was also living there. So Plato's face here was actually modeled after Da Vinci. In front of them, you also see a man in lilac cloak, writing something with his eyes closed. This man is a portrait of Michelangelo. Brilliant! 
But what's more jaw-dropping is that inside this museum, I finally got to visit Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. What a feeling it is to be standing underneath such a majestic masterpiece. What a pity that photographs were not allowed in there. And what a beautiful torture it all was for Michelangelo, for he only saw himself as a sculptor, yet was forced to paint this for four long years all by himself. At the end of the tour, we ended up in St. Peter's Church, which is the biggest church in the world. My Christian mother frolicked inside like a girl in the candy shop. While I admired such grand design for a religious spiritual space, here we are back in Rome again, from the Vatican State, and this is the Grand Colosseum right behind us. Actually, I was utterly horrified to visit the Colosseum because of its gory past. Animals killing men, men slaughtering animals, men killing each other for entertainment. I absolutely cannot have lunch here with a king, even if he invited me. Italia, I'm thankful that my parents didn't take me to you when I was a child, because I wouldn't have appreciated your beauty as I do today. I will remember you always. Ciao.